well, it's just overwhelming. It's quite a uh, feeling for Tucker Smith. There's 90 paintings in here, and I doubt if it's a tenth of what I've done. Seeing a vast retrospective of his storied career. Sun came out, and, and there it was, the fog and steam and the valleys. At the National Museum of Wildlife Art in Jackson, Wyoming. I've always been completely enthralled with the natural world. The title of this show is Celebration of Nature, and I hope that shows. For nearly 50 years, Tucker's paintbrush has given viewers a close-up look at the natural world. This is some of the scenery we see in the, the Wind Rivers. Taking them to the unspoiled corners of the American West, most people will never see. People have no idea what, what type of alpine country we have here in Wyoming. His favorite muse, the Wind River Mountains. It takes a lifetime to get in and see them all because most of it's wilderness area. The winds are a 100 mile stretch of rugged and remote alpine wilderness that Tucker's been exploring since he was a boy growing up in nearby Pinedale, Wyoming. I think I was 14. For years, Tucker's taken his camera along for his annual horseback pack trips into the winds. This is a, from one of our pack trips. With a rotating group of artist friends. Marty Shortcut, Marty Skinner was the outfitter on that trip. I don't think we saved any time and the trail was terrible. <laughs> Seeking to capture what he discovers in the high country on canvas and paint. That's Stroud Glacier, um, Arrowhead Peak. Um, it's an actual location, of course. That's what I paid. It's been raining, and the sun just streaked through on the on the hills, and it was spectacular. Most people will never see the places he paints. Very difficult to get back into here. We had to climb over Boulder Field for 3,500 feet up. We didn't get there that first day. Best known as a Western wildlife artist, his 1990 painting, Return of Summer. Huge milestone in my career and totally unexpected. Won the top purchase award at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum's prestigious pre de west exhibition and sale. Made a big difference in my career, as did the refuge painting that the museum here bought. The refuge is the first painting you see when you step into the National Wildlife Art Museum. Had to haul it up in a horse trailer because it wouldn't fit in the truck for sure. Commissioned by museum founder Bill Kerr. Every painting has an idea behind it. Tucker's portrayal of a winter day at the National Elk Refuge. This is called Sleeping Indian. Contains thoughtful details a casual viewer might miss. I decided that that mountain would become too dominant if I didn't put some clouds over it to play it down so there wouldn't be the tension between the mountain and the elk. A great deal of thought, work. I don't keep track of time when I paint, but it was probably several months. And even struggle goes into every Tucker Smith painting to this very day. Some of the friends I go out with are so adept at handling the field studies and doing beautiful paintings, and it's always a struggle for me. Every, every painting is a struggle. Of course, I love doing it, but it never comes easy. It really was a struggle when he started. I wasn't ready. Growing up drawing horses, the longtime painter did not believe he could make a living as an artist and was in his 30s when he finally left his computer programming job and with the unwavering support of his wife, Jean, threw the dice. Without Jean's 100% support, it never could have worked. You know, it was not an easy thing. The first year, I made $3,000, and we had two sons. Today, those two sons have given Tucker and Jean seven grandkids, and it's wonderful to share this retrospective with the family. To be able to show them this exhibit meant the world to me, to explain my art. They've seen me paint, they've been in my studios, and, but to be able to explain it to them was a rare opportunity. And, something I hope they'll remember. Smith has painted other subjects over the years, a sunset in Oslo, Norway, and a series of commissioned train paintings. All of a sudden, I became known as the train painter. I don't think I've done a train painting since then. We were able to get one of them back for the show. But it's the West, it's wildlife, and the high country of the Wind River Mountains that are his true calling.
My wife calls the skies like this that we get in Wyoming because of the high altitude Wyoming sky, and that's the title of the, the painting. I took the same scene and added people, and this, this is called breaking camp, but it totally changes the focus of the painting by putting people in it. I tried to make the horses part of the composition, and to do that, I opened up this area here in the trees. And even after perhaps a thousand or more paintings, he's still climbing. There's so much to painting and all art that it's not something that, that's easily learned, and it, it takes a lifetime to appreciate. You're never going to achieve what, what you'd like to, but hopefully you improve through the years. Tucker's retrospective has closed, but you can still see the show and read much more about Tucker Smith in the pages of the beautiful companion book, Tucker Smith, A Celebration of Nature.